Creo Parametric 4.0, Lesson 11, Part 1. In this lesson, we're going to do a detailed drawing of the anchor part. And I always like to start my detailing by opening up the component that I'm going to detail. That way, it's in session. So this is the one we created previously in Lesson 5. It does have a material assigned to it. I did make sure that I've turned on all my model tree items. I want to take a look at what else is here. I noticed that my datum plane tags are off here. And if I look in here, I can see all of this is turned off. Only datum planes that are visible are the ones for the set datums for the model. So take a look at your model. Now you can close this and it's still in session. It's not your session is still alive, and you can get that back very simply. So what we're going to do is, first of all, make sure you've set your proper directory, whatever it is. And we're going to click on New, and it is a drawing, and it's the anchor. I'm just going to give it a truncated name. Turn off the Use Default Template this time. Click OK. And you can see it's going to use the part what was in session. We're going to use empty. We're going to go to D size. So you want to do that. And OK. Right mouse button, sheet setup. And remember, we can get the same thing by coming down here and double clicking on the size in the very lower left hand corner. We are going to go and browse and pick on D. And here's our format. Now, what I want to do here is put in a view. So I've got to start off with right mouse button, general view. OK, and I'm just going to put it over here someplace. It doesn't make any difference. We can always move it. Now, we want the front view to be shown. Just so happens that that is it. Orientation really has nothing to do with just the, with the views. It has to do with how the model is situated. So, and it's following the environment, so it's coming in shaded. And I can always change that. And I can put down a select hidden and no tangencies apply. OK. Now, if I want to move it, make sure you've unlocked the view movement here so that you can move it around. With it selected, right mouse button, we're just going to do a projection view. And we'll do one up at the top also. Now, before I do that, I'm going to go in and I'm going to select, uh, let's select hidden line and see what happens. Projection view, like so. So I never finished the view over here. I kept it out. You can put that one back in. Projection view. You can see they're coming in according to the environment setting here rather than having to change the display. Now, in reality, I don't really need this top view. I'm going to click on it, right mouse button, delete, or just hit your delete key on your keyboard. So the next thing is I want a view looking directly in here normal. I want an auxiliary view. And I'm going to select the datum here. And it's going to give me a projection preview and put it up there on the top. So I've got my three views in there. Now, one of the things is I've got my old style. Oh, both of these came in. Well, let me just delete one. Didn't see I did that. I guess it just hadn't repainted. So I want to get rid of these old style datum. So we're going to go and we're going to go into prepare and to drawing properties. And we've done this before. Change and GT. This is follows does not follow the book exactly. The end result will be the same, though. So now I did that just so that I can see them easier because I know I'm not going to keep the old style ones. So I can click on these and I can move them where I want for now. I may decide to even get rid of some of them. And over here, like for instance, if I'm going to have a data A in one view, do I really need it on the adjacent view? That's something I have to decide. If you move your cursor around, 
it'll pick up on a particular item and you can see it picked up on that one not on the C which is what I was trying to get at I can go down here and I can select datum plane as my filter in the lower right hand corner and now it should be easier to pick up on things I'm gonna move this one back and if I can't get it there I can get it at the top and datum E I think I'm gonna go up here with it and again now you're gonna see what happens here I'm going to come in here and select and I'm gonna move this down and for some unknown reason it sometimes picks the wrong side so you can see what I've had to do here to make that work so don't get too frustrated with it same way with this one if I don't want it here I can move it back now that one did not make this jump over to here so this one here I think uh, right mouse button I'm gonna re erase it I can't delete it because it's a feature of the part and as far as D and B here, maybe I want to keep them, at least this one. And I've got the other one here at the top. So I've got to decide whether or not I want to keep it. I can keep it. We'll just go up there like so. Now, I'm going to take a look at the views. One of the things is I'd like to put in my center lines. So I'm going to go to my show model annotations and click on model datums. I don't know why they call them that. They're really not the datums. Datums are features that you use for construction or geometry on the model. So I'm going to select this view, this view, and this view. You can see all of these come in. Um, I don't really want, let's see, I'll, t I'll, I'll select all of them, but I'm going to unselect this one right here. And that should have been that one there. So I'm going to apply. And there's still other ones I don't want to show, but I'll get rid of those. All right. So I've got my center lines in there. In the front here, we can see it's very easy. You click on it. It's not letting me select my center lines because I've got datum plane selected over here. So I've got to go to either the proper one, like axes, or just general for it to allow my selection. So now I can make this look appropriate. Seems a very tedious process as far as I'm concerned. But if you're detailing it, um, this is something you have to do. Over in the side here, we really don't care about it, so I'm going to delete it out. In fact, when we look at this view, if I double click on it, I'm going to go in display and I'm going to get rid of, let's see, let's make it uh, no hidden and no tangencies. It's just a very simple view. Now on the top, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go into view display and I'm going to say no hidden and no tangencies. I could have done them to all. I could have selected all the views at the same time if they are going to be the what I want. Now, one of the things is here, I have a hole going through, and that hole does not go all the way through the, does not display through the part in an adjacent view, which it's supposed to. The other thing is I notice I'm missing a datum axis, or we call a center line here. There we go. All right. And again, on this one here, if I wanted to drag it out, I could I could change it. It's kind of interesting. I'm not sure where I left this project, but I do notice that my hole is not going down the middle here. So I'm going to have to take a look at that and find out what's wrong because something's going on. All right. So since I am concerned about that because I noticed it was there, I'm going to open up my part, and I'm going to go to the hole and edit the definition of the hole. And you can see I left it in a modeling situation where the reference is B. And if you recall from lesson five, I want that to be different. From my edge here, that's one thing. In fact, I know from the edge 
that one's going to remain. I'm going to remove this one, hold down my control key, and I'm going to pick on D, and I'm going to make that aligned. Like so. So now it'll be in the middle. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to a little out of order than in the book. We're going to go over to the dimensions, and I'm going to pick over on this view first, and then this view, and then this view, and you'll see nothing shows up in the top. And there's a lot of dimensions here. We're just going to keep them all. I mean, normally, I would be maybe a little bit more selective. But I want you to see something. I want you to see that there's a dimension here, and there's a dimension here. This one goes to the angled edge, and this one here goes to the cut that's here. We have two dimensions. So if we go back over to our part, let's change that. Let's say we know now that this cut always is going to be along this edge. So we're going to select on it. I'm not used to the new interface. It comes up. I usually just do right mouse button, but that's an extra click. And I want to go in and edit the internal sketch. And I'll probably, let's, uh, let's look at it this way, hidden line. And let's go up and make it coincident. So let's make this line go on this edge. And it's going to come back and say, you've got to get rid of one of these. We don't need all these dimensions and constraints. So we'll delete the dimension. Check. That means it'll always be determined by the edge. So if this edge goes up or down, changes, then this cut will change at the same time. So now, if you've noticed, I only have one of these remaining, not both of them. And do a little house cleaning while I'm there, move it over. And if we look here, a lot of these dimensions are going to be necessary and but they're not they don't look very good on this particular view so for instance on this one right here and this one right here I want to move to the front view and we can see by the way if you do this it'll actually move two things at the same time whatever you selected select five they're all gonna do the movement so I clicked and then I can do changes so how about flip arrows in this case, I have to flip the arrow twice and then move to wherever I want this dimension to be, like so. Now, on the front here, I have the 25-degree one, and I want to flip those arrows, and I want to move it over. And the reason I'm not going to worry about this other one here is because I'm going to move it to another view later. Now, one of the things I did, and I did notice we have a degree here. If I'm going to double-click on this degree... I'm going to go up here, and it says round dimensions and how many places. What if I put zero places? So there's my 118. So my front view is looking pretty good. I'm going to move this dimension eventually and the hole. The position of the hole, though, I would like to show a little bit better. And so I'm going to move it to the top view. Or I should say the auxiliary view. The other thing for the auxiliary view is... I have a slot dimension here. I have the dimension to the center, and I think I move that just for giving a little bit more clarity over here. And we have our whole dimension. Let's move our whole dimension. All of those will move to the auxiliary view. Let's see what happens when I try to move them. I tried this before, and it gave me a hard time with this one and found a way to adjust it, but let's put that in there for the slot. And again, you can do your house cleaning by dragging the lines back. And in this one here, same thing. You got them going all the way over to here. We want them to just go down the center. And again, this one's questionable. You might want to put it back in the right-hand view, but we'll leave it where it is. And we'll put it in the middle.
This one, on the other hand, it always perturbs me, like, why won't it move? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it to the front view, like so. And then I'm going to see what happens if I move it back. And it's okay. So what I'm guessing is because I moved multiple dimensions to that view, it's stuck on the axes. I have no idea why. I really don't care why things happen. I just care how I can avoid them. So we've got the dimension to the hole. So it's looking pretty good. But I did mention before that the top view here, the auxiliary view, or the side view, has to show this quarter-inch diameter hole, whether or not it's going through or just through part of it. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to click on Layout and Edge Display. And I'm going to say um, Hidden Line. And I'm going to put my cursor approximately where that hole is. Now hold down my control key and do the other side. I'm not going to worry about over here. And you can see those dimensions, uh, those hidden lines come back in. Now the other thing is i got a lot of extra lines over here. So how about erase line? And I'm going to hold down my control key, and I'm going to eliminate a lot of stuff, stuff that's really not necessary. Done. And you can see it's pretty good shape at this point. Click on my annotate tab if I want to continue editing. Sometimes things will pick up, sometimes they will not. Here we go again, my favorite dragging situation. Like so. I got my gap in there. That's why I did that. So my top view looks pretty good. Looks like I missed a view, I missed a edge right there. So layout tab, edge display. I want to erase it, and I want to pick that up. So now it's showing a true shape view. Let's go back over to the side, right side view. I'm going to click on this dimension, and I'm going to move it over to the front. And this one I'm going to move up, like so. And again, here I've got my degrees, and with a degree you don't want any portion of a degree, or per unless that's the dimension, then you have to keep it. But in this case, it's just 25 degrees. So again, it's looking okay. Now, one of the things I'd like to do is have some clarity in the front view here, and I'd like to have a section. But if you recall, I can't remember if we did or we didn't, but I don't have a section showing here. I do have materials, so I must have done steel, but I didn't do a section here. So instead of doing it in this view, we could do it in, I mean, in the model, we could do it here. We did that in a previous lesson where we showed you how to do it. So it doesn't make any difference where you create the section, but just remember the section itself lives, in other words, is embedded in the model, not in the drawing. So I do have a tendency to like to go to my model before I do my section. All right. And uh, I can change the color if I want, just to get better clarity. Ooh. And we'll do that one. Take a look at it. Put in some section lining. And that looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to deactivate it. And at the same time, I might as well turn off the section so we can't see it. In session, so if I go back over to my drawing, you will notice I do have a section available now down here. So I'm going to double click on my front view and I'm going to go into sectionings, 2D sections, and plus. If there is a valid section, it will show up here, and it is. And I forgot to change the name to A. So I'm going to click apply.
and OK. Right mouse button, add arrows. I'll add them up there. And just because I really can't stand the way that looks, I'm going to go back over to my part. You know, I like working here. And I'm going to edit that. No, I think it's OK there. Rename. And we are going to call that Section A. And yes, I could have done it in the drawing down here. So now you can see I've got my identifier here. I'm going to move it down. I'm going to be in the Layout tab before I can select the sectioning. And I'm going to click on Scale, and I'm going to double it. Oop, I'm sorry, half it a few times till it looks good. I can change the angle on that if I want. Done. So I've got my section view. Now, I feel like it's a little cluttered here, so I'd like to have a detailed view of just the hole and, and where it's measured from here. So I first noticed that this dimension is wrong. And in the book, I think it's 2.625. Enter. I'm going to click on Review, and I'm going to Regenerate Active Model. And I think I have this dimension wrong, too. 2.125. I can't remember what it is, to be honest. And again, in the um, click, and I'm going to go into my review and update the model. Well, still isn't right. 2.125. And then update it. There, a little bit better. My dimension, oh, I'm sorry. I keep hitting the wrong one. This is the one I wanted. This one is the 2.625. Kept thinking I was in the top view, and I wasn't. So you can update the drawing at any time. The active model, you want to be able to pull this back, and you can see it's still incorrect. I should maybe not be so lazy. I should look at the dimension, but I'm not going to. And at least it's off there. But you can check these dimensions. They're, they're slightly off, obviously. All right, so I've got my view there. I'd like to have a detail view. And so I'm going to go to my layout, and I'm going to select detail view. And in this view here, I'm going to pick on an entity, not a center line. It doesn't select. I'm just going to pick anywhere and put a little cross there, a little X. And now I'm going to select positions for a spline. I don't have to close it up. I just hit my middle mouse button. It puts a circle around there. Now it says here down at the bottom, put a position for your center of your new view. And I'm going to click over here. So I have my detail view. Now, it's not perfect, to say the least. And I can go into my annotate tab and move some things around. In fact, on this one here, I'm going to erase it. And I think I'll erase this one, too, instead of having it clutter the view up. Can you move this? And it's missing some stuff. So for instance, how about a center line? That would be nice. Oh, didn't pick up on it. Click the view. OK. And I can adjust that a little bit before I bring dimensions into it. Now, I do notice that it's kind of truncated. And if I brought dimensions over, some of the dimensions wouldn't work. Like this dimension I want to show over here, maybe. Or the dimension for the hole. So I want to be able to see those things. And so my view here isn't very good. If I double click on it, you'll notice that it's giving me these options. The edge, that's down here that I selected. Spline. So if I want to redo the spline, let's say I'm going to select here, and I want to go all the way to the corner. Apply. 
Okay. So now what it did is it adjusted the detail view over here. And I can move this view around. I could change the scale if it's too big. I'm going to leave it like it is. Now I do want to move some dimensions over there. So obviously this 118 I want to bring over and also the depth of the hole. I could even bring the note here over or the call out and move it to the view here. And then just move things around a little bit so they look a little bit better. So all my dimensions are there appropriately. Now, if I look here, I say, well, this is my section lining and this is my detail section lining. So if I go back to layout and I double click on the cross hatching here, I can make that independent detail independent and scale and half it. So it looks similar to the one in the front now instead of it being large. Done. Move that around. And you can do some house cleaning. You can see you could have to pull back some extension lines. Same way with the hole here. They go all the way to the other end. I'm not sure what the default is for determining those things, but they don't ever seem to be exactly what you want. Some where things work in both mode, any mode actually, any any of the tabs. But others only work in the tab you want to be in, in this case annotate. So on layout, there are things that you can select and do. But if you're going to work with dimensions, all this other stuff, it's probably a good idea to be in the proper choice here. Annotate, layout, whatever it is. I'm going to flip the arrows and put it like that. Now, I notice in the front view, let's say I wanted some overall sizes. I've got the, um, the width, 5. I, or length, the width I've got over here. So the only thing I don't have is the height. So what if somebody wants to know how big this is going to be for shipping purposes, let's say boxing, whatever. So let's say I want a dimension either to the top or even just to the center line, depending on what it is. I can add a dimension at any time. Annotate, dimension, oh, I hit the wrong one, sorry. Reference dimension. So for instance, if I pick down at the bottom here, hold down in my control key and I select here. Okay, this one is giving me non-tangent. I guess I could go over here and select tangent instead. And put it down here. Looks like I got two of them in, which is actually good because in the book it shows you put this one in and this one goes in this time just in the demo. Now, it has the REF, which is a very old way of doing a dimension. So I'm going to click on display here, dimension text, a dimension text. You'll see that it says REF. One thing you got to remember is make sure you don't add an extra. I took all my spaces out and I'm going to put in a parenthesis here. And Click OK and it looks fine. But I want to do this one here too. I'm just going to go and I'm going to get rid of REF only. And I want you to see the difference. So this one has an extra space in it because REF had a space between it and the value, the default. You can move these around, I'm not saying if they're in perfect positions. You might want to bring that one up to the top. And this one's going right to where this cutout is, so you do want that in the view. Up on the top, it wouldn't show up too good. So we've done a lot of work, we've set up a lot of things. 
I think we're going to stop here to break it up into two or three pieces because we're going to still go and do a lot of minor changes and set up, etc. in part two and possibly part three.